Hey folks, Engineer775 here, wanting to show you on a rainy day, I chose to stay on purpose, um, how to make hot water using a thermal siphoning process. A coil that I've made and bent this with, with ice, you can do it with sand. There's a video I've done on this project. I've placed it inside some stove pipe, drilled two holes on the other side, and I've adapted it down to four inch. This is all inexpensive uh, stove pipe from a local hardware store and then some copper tubing for the thermal siphoning process. And what I'm going to be doing is, as the water comes into this hot coil, it will rise up in the coil and dump into the top of the water heater I picked up, somebody was throwing it away. So I have the ability to heat that 40 gallon water heater with some sticks that people were throwing away. So this is a do-it-yourself uh, hot water on-demand heater um, that could supply you plenty of water, uh, hot water that is, in a grid down situation. So let's uh, get her started. It's, it's raining, it's starting to pick up a little bit, but I want to show you uh, what you can do uh, with some scraps, things that have been uh, scavenged and things thrown away, um, but really focusing on what the little stove tech stove can do for you. Okay, we've got the fire um, going pretty good here in our stove and I just want to show you what kind of temperatures we're getting. There's 540, 540 degrees. Um, that's where the coil is sitting. Right in there, five, uh, I think 556, 565. 565 was the max temperature I think I'm getting right now. And I removed some of the stack. I had too much stack on there. I was getting the too much airflow and I wasn't getting the heat. I do have a diffuser plate, little cap sitting on here right above the coil to keep the heat down in this chamber so I get a good heat exchange. Again, the cold water is coming from the bottom. Let me show you that. And it's a standard water heater. So I have I just cold water from the drain and I just teed off, put a shut off in a check valve. And then the cold water goes and it hits the bottom of the coil and then it rises up in here. So this is, uh, you can hear some gurgling. Let's see. Here. I mean, this thing will burn your hand off. It's so hot. And that gurgling, that's hot water going to the top. You can see this thing shake a little bit as it thermal siphons and pumps. What I'm going to do is disconnect this line because you really can't see. And uh, I'll be back. Alright, so I've disconnected this line. And I'm going to bring it down here to the side and try not to burn myself. So, all right, I've pulled this thing down. And you can see this thing spitting water, okay? I don't know if you can see the steam coming off, but this is being done without electricity, folks. This is just through the heat. I'm going to put some hot water in this, in this bottle. Yeah, it's not a fast process, but there's no, there's no electricity, there's no pump. In this water, you see the steam rolling off it. It's going to melt this plastic bottle. Oh, yeah. So, and that's that's very, very hot. So, you can see my on demand, see it's steaming. This is just a natural process. And this, I don't know if you can see the steam coming off it, but that that is hot. Now, what water was about 180 degrees. Um, so, yeah, this can be a little dangerous, but you need hot water for your dishes or for laundry. And this thing is just pumping away. There goes a little steam. So it's kind of like a, an old coffee pot. We're just percolating here. You feed a little wood in. Let that thing burn. And there's no electricity on here, folks. It's just pumping, pumping water by using heat. I think you can see the steam coming off. So... It would take a little while, but I, you know, half hour, and I can, if I, it's all up to how good a, a fire stoker you are, but I can, uh, I can heat that water heater up in about 30 minutes, and towards the end, though, obviously the water is getting warmer that comes into the bottom of the coil, so the differential isn't as much. Right now, the water is like 60 degrees coming into the coil, coming out at you know steam see the steam coming off real hot water coming off of there so that's it that's the uh, 
do it yourself stove tech fire and ice on demand water heater Is that a long enough title okay I think that's it so we're just pumping water so as long as you have a container of water and you hook up a thermal siphon to a heat source you would have hot water and it's an often overlooked prep for those preparing some people spend a lot of money doing solar hot water heaters on demand you got propane you know me I love the wood wood and water and you can do just about anything you need all right I think that's enough I hope I explained it well enough go back and look at the bending uh, the copper tubing with ice still tweaking this to get some better output I'm gonna step up the um, copper tubing this is only this is 3 8 if I did it in half inch I would get probably 40 percent more hot water um, definitely 40 percent more surface area so but this is sufficient you know you do this for a half hour again you're mixing this if you mix that with some cold water you're in good shape but again this thing is pumping without power I think I've covered it okay let's stoke this fire and again now it's no sense wasting it so I'm gonna hook it back to the water heater but just hope you understand that that water would be going into the top of the water heater the cold water would be coming out and it would keep doing that until that tank equalized or normalized to uh, as long as you have that fire going it would ultimately just keep going up and up and up in temperature until the pop-off blew so be careful when you're doing these things this is the way people used to heat water engineer 775 signing off